Hi, Kevin Harrington here, an original shark from Shark Tank. Iron Faith Nutrition promotes overall wellness for those who experience soreness or stress. Take a look. If you experience soreness, muscle fatigue, or joint discomfort, then you should try Curcumisone. It can help support your body's repair process and increase a healthy recovery. Using a synergistic combination of ingredients, Cumazine provides the most advanced levels to support a healthy, inflammatory response, improving overall wellness. I've been racing ultra-distance triathlons for over 30 years, and I've tried everything out there, and I mean everything. And Iron Faith Nutrition blows them all out of the water. Our SE Herbal Tea helps your body detox naturally and boosts immune support. Order now and receive free shipping. A portion of all profits go to charity. For all your overall health and wellness solutions, go to ironfaithnutrition.com. And here we go, Faith and Facts podcast with Big Feige and Fetz. Man, lots of good things. One of the things you're starting to see is with professional athletes, more and more, and entertainers, them sharing their faith and being out front and outspoken. You see CJ Stroud from the Texans just recently oh, coming out and saying things. I mean, people were getting more bold. Why do you think that is just all of a sudden starting to happen? I, I you know, Brian, I'm, I'm, I'm elated because uh, there's actually a major battle going on uh, opposed to uh, standing up for the Lord. And all of the athletes you mentioned, like C.J. Stroud, he was actually uh, bold enough to proclaim the gospel. Uh, just like many athletes before him, uh, he was given his statements about how Christ uh, is, is in his life, and NBC cut the whole thing out. And it's happening over and over and over again. I, I can't remember who the uh, uh, mixed martial artist guy is, um, but boy, I tell you what, he was, he was, he was, same thing happened to him. And it goes on and on and on. And then there was uh, Hulk Hogan. You know, we got Hulk Hogan. So these things are happening. And, you know, I understand when you first come to the Lord, there's a, there's a learning curve. In, in that, okay, you're getting pulled out of the world, you're leaving the world, you love the Lord, you come to the Lord, and you want to please the Lord. But, but what happens is you still got the flesh, and you're still uh, being trained by the Holy Spirit to what life in Christ and obedience to Christ is all about. And so we see this over and over again, and I just think that there's a need in the world and a lot of these people have trusted in their fame, their own strength, in money, whatever it was. The, the things of the world were enticed. We've all come out. We've come out of the world. And we're no longer in the world. Uh, and so, therefore, we're in the world, but not of the world. So then you come out of it, and then you have Alice Cooper. So here's, here's the problem I have. I'll use Alice Cooper as an example. I, I really, their testimony, I really feel that these people were talking about at this that point, like all of us, when we come, hey, there's a cleansing that we're going to go through. We don't just, just shake the whole world off of us and all of a sudden uh, you're, you're walking with the Lord. But now it's a growing experience. We're like children. We have the milk, and then we're fed the meat. And then we get closer and closer to the Lord. So I'm not, I'm just grateful that people like Hulk Hogan, like Strauss, like Alice Cooper, that, that, and, and others too. I can't even remember them all, but there's quite a, so many of them. There's a list of the 50 so called um, born again believers. So the problem becomes I'm grateful, I'm happy, the more. People come to the Lord, and we wish more and more people would all pray to the Lord. So, the issue here with, like, using now Scoop again is that he says, Well, you can be a Christian, I can still play this kind of 
beautiful. And I, I, that's when I find it was kind of a tough time because it seems to me that uh, you're trying to have both ways. Or so if you're a new creature and you and you leave the old stuff behind, or, or you're not, you know? So what are you going to hold on to? Why do you want to continue playing that kind of music? Why do you want to keep on walking in the swamp and, and loving it and being, what is it, is it like being loved by people? So the reality of it is you become a new creature eventually. You just can't walk the way you did before you said Christ is my Lord and Savior. So there's a problem with that. So, I don't know. You've run into a lot of, lot of athletes, a lot more than I have. And uh, how have you seen this work? How, I, I mean, we have to judge, okay? I, I'm not saying I judge by the flesh. I'm trying to judge by the scriptures. We're, we're all called to judge, but the judgment comes by the scripture, not from Matthew 7, 1, where the Lord says, take the law out of your eyes, don't judge somebody. Judge not unless you be judged. He's talking about judging by the things of our own teachings, by the teachings of the world, teachings of religion. But Paul's talking about the man of the spirit has to judge all things. So in fairness, how do we I'm grateful to hear Alice Cooper. I'm grateful that uh Deion Sanders and others are out there. But but then there's another issue. Has Deion Sanders uh, he he's in love with D.D. Jakes. D.D. Jakes is out there baptizing all kinds of people, and then what happens? They just stay in the world. And what do they live for? Money, you know? It, it just goes on and on. So you see stuff that's happening, and basically, I think they're condemning themselves either at the point of ignorance, but when they see the light, there has to be a point of Hey, brother, hey, sister, this is wrong, you know? So I'll throw that out there. So. I mean, what, why do you think, so I mean, we'll go back to the C.J. Stroud with, you know, NBC cutting the feed off of him or, or changing up however it was for, you know, removing Christ as he started talking about it. Why, why, why would companies do that? I mean, they, they, they don't necessarily do it when they're talking about sex. Or, or drugs or any of those things. It just seems to happen to be when, you know, they're speaking about, you know, Christ or, or the Lord or Jesus. I mean, however you want to, to reference it. Yeah. There's a, it's just, it just goes back to the God. It goes right back to the serpent. It goes right back to there would be enmity between uh, those following Satan and those who, are going to follow Messiah, you know? And so, the, this is the world, the world, of, you know, even Christian stations, even they bow to the Baals, they even bow to the mammons for the sake of mammon. It's really, really difficult time. I, I remember when I, I was in China, Chris and I, and we were getting ready to come back, and the brothers were, we wanted to stay in China. And and then the brothers got together, the saints got together, the, 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 the ladies said to And they were praying, they were saying, man, you got to go back. You gotta, if God wants you and Chris, Daniel chapter 1, to flourish for his kingdom, go do it, you know? At that time, Daniel chapter 1 was just a nothing, you know, a little tiny store. But I just told Lord, and he promised me that he was going to protect me from fame and from money. Those were the two things, you know, that and I know that's what that's what two of the temptations of of, of Christ when he was in, in the in the desert. So so I think the same thing happens to everyone. Satan's not gonna just allow you in his dominions and not just gonna allow those to say, Do you think that, that Hogan so how 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 is Satan gonna and his work is going to get Deion Sanders. How's he going to do that? Pride, right? Money, right? Fame, glory. That's not easy to handle that stuff. It's not easy to handle, you know. And, uh, and it boils down to, I was just thinking about the day. I said, Lord, 
take out my eye if it's going to take my hand off it's going to cause me to remove uh, things in my life you know so thank god we were on the radio things were going god was building the radio station the lord was building the products he had testimonies of people over and over again and it was so so easy to stop thinking oh wow this is great oh yeah you know people start saying oh jim hey this wow yeah your first thing is really awesome you is awesome you know and uh and the testimonies are great they were supposed to people that were supposed to be dead in six months are still alive 10 years later so satan's going to find a way to pierce that that walk and, and throw this throw the rocks in the path you know brother so i think it's just it's just they hate christ they hate and, and it's just like wanting to destroy all the firstborn babies why why did, did they have to try to destroy the firstborn babies because it's not about the babies it's about the, the line of the messiah you know the anointed one it goes right back to eden it goes right back to that where's the anointed one satan has to stop the anointed one he has to stop the anointed of those who are, are following it, the messiah so that's that's I think so. Someone comes out of darkness, comes just into the light, and I'm all. I understand. I I believe with all my heart. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I know, unfortunately, there are those who who uh, believe in eternal security. Oh, I'm born again. I'm saved. Oh, so whatever happened, it's, I can never lose my salvation. Well, you got to read Hebrews six. Uh, beginning with chapter six in uh, in Hebrews, and you see that it's a scary thing for those who once tasted the goodness and truth of Christ and have fallen away. It cannot be restored. So uh, I'm happy to see these guys. I'm concerned about them. Uh, look at look look at his uh, uh, President Bush uh, Trump's daughter. Uh, she, she's married to Jerry. She she left Christianity to be uh, to be Jewish. So there's something wrong there. You know, it's a scary thing, uh, brother. So for all these folks, I'm happy to see it. I, I, I pray that, and, and even uh, Mahomes, even Mahomes is uh, saying uh, his heart, his blood is uh, his heart is in. Uh, the chiefs, but his blood is in Christ, or something like that. One mm. of those, vice right, versa. So, I'm grateful. I, I want that testimony. But boy, I tell you what, it's a heavy thing to make that stand and not fulfill it. Right. You know? Did Did you hear uh, Jim Harbaugh, the the head football coach at the University of Michigan, just 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 did uh, a talk at, at it, with the abortion rights and so forth and yeah. and came out and 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 said that you know he was very much opposed and you know was all for the right of you know allowing a child to be born and it was not good for abortion and that's somebody at the university of michigan which is a pretty liberal school uh, him coming out and saying that i mean that that's some controversial statements that's for sure why he's leaving, that's probably why he's looking he's leaving and probably taking on a uh nfl job probably you know you think it's possible uh it, you know i i'm glad uh it's you know i don't know if he professed christ but um taking a stand on that has some kind of uh relationship to so yeah i would hope hope that would be uh, the case i would hope that most anybody who says lord lord would have that position against uh, uh taking a life you know that's uh some of the thoughts on that i just heard that about things now you know it's a big one for sure with harbaugh yeah mm -hmm. 
What, uh, what, what t- tell me this because I, I, I ask it to you all the time. What what have you been reading the word? Oh boy, I tell you what. Uh, I've been reading like Job. Me. I've been reading Job, so I don't know if I'm a glutton for punishment, but you know, you know, oh, reading no. about reading about Job's ordeal is is always fascinating to to see how how much we don't understand how powerful God is and how he doesn't have to ask our permission to take something away or to give us something, which is both sets a blessing. Lord, um, Lord gives and the Lord takes. And that's a prime example. And, and we have no right to complain. It, the book of Job is interesting. I, I don't know if I ever said this, but uh, when I was in the uh, organized churches, I got uh, asked a lot, a lot to uh, do a teaching uh, on a Sunday. So I did it on Job. And, uh, <laughs> so right off the bat, it says that the wife was, no, Chris God and die, you know? This is after they lost their children, their cattle, their servants. Uh, they lost everything, right? And so she says, Chris, Chris, God and die. And Joe says, what? Are we to just accept good and not evil from the Lord? It's The word is evil in Hebrew. It's not like, oh, this is bad. This is all too sad. That's sad. It's like evil. He says, are we supposed to accept evil? And then the whole church, the whole body wanted to stone me. I said, because, oh, you should. And evil is from God. Yeah, even if you want to use it, check everyone out. The word hate. Check out the word hate when Jesus says, hate your family, hate your mother, father, sister, brother. Hate. It's the word is hate. But all the Christians, all the great teachers, all the people out there that want to give you lollipops and gumdrops and uh, sugarcoat everything, they just won't deal with it. But God's sovereign, God's holy, God's righteous, and so that's what this. Is. So the Job issue is really pretty profound. I did something. I went back just not too long ago, and you know what I did? I did uh, in, in uh, Job. I read only, I went back and I only read Job's words between mm. him and God. You Interesting. Know, it was really, really uh, pretty amazing. Because in the end, you know, in the end, it, uh, God restores all the stuff, Job, everything that's that. And, and, uh, Job is set back up in, in, in his honor. God honored him. God brought him up. The reality of it is, is the Lord restoring Job and his fortune? But God directly was speaking with him. You know, so what happens? He can have that same relationship too with, with, with God and speaking to him. But I found that quite interesting. The conversations of, of Job and, and avoiding the intermittent uh, judgments of his friends, which which God says, your friends are all, all wrong, you know? And so uh, the Lord straightens them all out. And, uh, yeah, the, the see- conversations, the conversations with his friends, you know what, what I look at that and he, the friends, you think when friends are supposed to be supportive. Right. You think friends are supposed to give you encouragement and all his friends ever did was just criticize him, tell him he was wrong. You know, they passed judgment on him and they didn't help him in this time of need as opposed to encouraging him and opposed to, you know, trying to uplift him and trying to got him. They were just you clearly had to do something wrong. God, God wouldn't do anything to you if you didn't do something wrong. They, but they, they didn't know that part. They were merciless, you know. They had no mercy towards him. 
here's the guy sitting there, first of all, devastated, lost everything. So, you know, so you have to look at Joe Pitcher and quiet your own life, right? Oh, the child died, the son died, the, the, the wife dies, something happened, you lose your job, something along that path. And then all of a sudden, everybody stops throwing Bible verses at you. Oh, man, you know, you know God's judging you. God, put, this is a judgment from God, you know. In the meantime, the whole thing wasn't a judgment from God. It was the confronting of uh, the battle of Satan to show that Job had, no matter what, Job would stand with the Lord and not, and Satan could not take this uh, man from him, you know? So a lot of the times, something's happening, break the leg, you lose the job, the family, somebody gets sick with cancer, on and on and on. Oh, Lord, why are you doing this to me? I don't know. Maybe he took the heads away. For many, many years, people would say to Trish and I, they call the radio show and they say, Wow, oh, you're still around? We can't believe that you haven't been killed, you know? And, uh, and others would say, You just have kept a hedge around you. The Lord has protected you and kept the hedge around us. So every time something goes wrong, I was looking at uh, today, I was just uh, sitting here pondering on things, and uh, the Lord says it's better to be wrong than wrong somebody, you know? And so it's pretty a profound. lot of things have happened, huh? I said that's pretty profound. Yeah, and, 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 but you got to try, try to live it. You know, the Lord says it's better to be wrong than wrong somebody. I'm always telling my wife that. I said, Chris, God's sovereign, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's Job. God's sovereign. So now it's better that those friends of his come and judge him and tear him apart, tell him what a wicked man he was, how unrighteous he was, what a sinner he was, how he uh, spoke against God, stood against God, and every single thing you could think wrong about him. And it was better for him to go through that in the long run than to be the one issuing out that kind of uh, judgment. So we sit back and we just say, okay, we're going through something right now. All right, Lord, I'm just supposed to pray. I'm not supposed to wait on you. I don't know. I'm going to use this, though. It's better to be wrong than wrong somebody, you know? You know, and, and better to forgive and forget. You know, and a lot of people are like, you know, I can never forgive you for that person. Hey, man, let me tell you something. Every one of us who says, Lord, Lord, has got to get to the point of trying to forgive somebody who's unforgivable. So, uh, and I don't care. If a believer is a believer, they're going to go through that. You're going to have to forgive somebody no matter what. Not just seven times like Peter said, hey, Lord. Seven times. Should I forget my forgive my brother seven times he offends me? You know, hey Joe, you're gonna forgive those guys seven times? Who else said 77 times? 77 times. Hey, hey Jim, you think you did something good? You just forgave that brother? All right, you got another 76 times, you know, bro. And so yeah, so yeah, Job has uh, been really powerful and uh and and not only that, but he also justifies the, the existence of fire breathing dragons and dinosaurs and beasts. So, right there, Leviticus, I mean, <laughs> Leviathan was right there. You know, so all those years I taught evolution and all the years I taught, taught uh, you know, uh, instead of creation, it was. Uh, I needed these things to know these things, you know. How it would you when you go you go back? I mean, as you just said, you, you taught those things. I mean, you were a teacher for uh, for a while, you know, prior to yeah. going into the nutrition 17. industry. Seventeen years. Yeah. And and you yeah. think about how things were taught in the academic system back then, to now how things are taught now. How hard would it have been to 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 
to be in the be in the academic world in the public school system now compared you know to back then no I, it's impossible uh, it's impossible uh, it's interesting because i spent many years teaching everything from uh, preschool to postgraduates in college i taught, taught everything uh, biology chemistry uh, all these sciences so it's i loved it i love teaching i love teaching and conceptual learning, like homeschooling. I was encouraging uh, churches way back in the late 70s, early 80s. I was encouraging people to homeschool their kids. And oh boy, the churches were so against it. You can't believe it. I, it was, hey, it was, I'm trying to save them from the demonic teachings and the ways of the government schools which is nothing there more than indoctrinate people to obey uh, the gods of mammon and, and the uh, gods of, of Baal uh, and the free, free sex gods of, of, of Jezebel. Every wickedness you can think of exists in those, those public schools. So I'm trying to encourage them to train the children at home. So, so I, I remember teaching chemistry, and I, I have. I had a great time teaching. I had, it was tremendous. I, I had great students, especially in some of the private schools. The, the public schools were, I had to deal with them in a different way. You know, I had knives pulled on me and things like this. But, but the teaching, even if you just stuck to the science of teaching chemistry, you know, single equation, double equation, computer performance, doing all of these things, okay, and, and, and doing that. In the end, somewhere in that society of that those, that school environment, the enemy is going to hate you because you represent Christ. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had a, I, 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 I dabble with art. I, I've done all kinds of paintings, watercolors, oil portraits. I, I, I've done all kinds of painting. And so I had a, uh, a air, I did an airbrush thing of uh, Christ on the, on the cross. And I put, uh, prepare to meet thy God, you know. And I came in one day to my office and it was all ripped up. It was really, <laughs> really right? So, so. It was, it was all ripped up, and I just had to, oh, well, what can you do? But every time I still tried to do something, I, I, I tried, because I'll give you an example. I was walking by the chemistry, the science class, and uh, the, the doctor, the, the teacher was in there, and I walked by, and I heard him say, well, class, today we're going to create oxygen and hydrogen. So I stopped and I said, oh, excuse me, but you can't create hydrogen and oxygen. You can only collect it. God created it. So little stupid things like that, I would say. And guess what? Eventually, eventually where you're standing is going to be exposed if you're really standing for the Lord. Another, another time there was uh, uh, ML Carr, played for the Patriots. Uh, for the for the Celtics, so ML Khan was coming to the school to do a do a present uh, audio thing for the whole school. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a big audience, right? Well, the the vice principal and the principal didn't want me to meet with them because every time somebody came in, I wanted to give them the gospel, you know. So they said, <laughs> "Well, Jim, Jim, uh, we're going to be in the auditorium." We want you to protect the mailboxes up here by the offices. So now I'm praying, I'm praying. Oh, okay, Lord. Well, how am I going to get to tell ML Carr about, about uh, Christ? How am I going to witness to him? So I'm standing there with, with, by the mailbox. I'm standing by the mailboxes, and I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And all of a sudden, guess what? There's not another soul near, near me. The whole floor, everybody is down in the auditorium. How could it be? 
The only person on the floor besides me comes walking around the corner, and on car. And on car comes walking. <laughs> I said, hey, I've been waiting for you. I got to tell him about the gospel. He was supposed to be the primary. <laughs> so, so the principal and vice principal, oh, but they couldn't believe it. Here I am leading him down to the way the audience was. Oh, man. I did the same thing for uh, a guy. That's your life story. NASA. That, that is your life story of how the Lord kind of puts people in your path that are unexpected and doesn't yeah. make sense. You got, that's what we're called to do. That's why I like C.J. Uh, Stroud. Right? It's C.J., right? Yeah, C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud, yeah. 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 Incredible yeah. year. I mean, I mean, I, he's had the most prolific year of a rookie quarterback. A rookie. A rookie. Of, of anybody in NFL history. Incredible, right? So, and he's so humble. Man, I'll tell you what. In the main Very piece, humble. My mission is for Christ, you know, to talk about the Lord. Now, I played football, but my mission I'm a football player, but my mission is to be mission for I'm on a mission for Christ. And it was really awesome. I tell you what. So so that was and that really if everybody took that stand, that's what that's what like you asked earlier, how can it be? You know, why are these people why are we cutting people out of the news and everything else? Well, the reality of it is they're deadly afraid that people really stood up for Christ, what will happen. But an event, eventually, it's going to happen, and then we we'll all be uh, not just ostracized. We're all going to be the head of evil. You know, so that's on the hate of you. You think there's hatred for the Jews right now? If the Christians actually stood up as they're going to, they, the real, real believers. Not everybody. This is, you know, you get the, you see these people running for office now. You know. You got uh, Nikki. There's Nikki out there. What's her purpose? Her purpose is to, for us to see who the rhinos are. Well, she's just there, you know, you're going to see who the rhinos are. Republicans name O only. That's all she's there for. Well, it's the same thing with a lot of these Christians out there that uh, proclaim Christ. Eventually, you're going to see the ones who are. Uh, uh, in name only, Christ in name only. That's what, what we're going to see. It's in, inevitable. It's going to be, uh, it's going to happen. It's all happening. Well, I mean, I think you, you start to see, and, and Satan obviously doesn't want, doesn't want them to, doesn't want individuals out there proclaiming the Lord, you know, um, in, in any way, shape, or form. Well, for sure. Well, that brings me to a point. Uh, one of the things that, you know, you, you ask about certain things, and you think, oh, what do I, what do I, they mean, I need someone, I mean, I, mean, I, 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 I've lost reading all kinds of stuff, but, but, uh, I was just thinking about, I, you know how I always tell people to sit there the kingdom of God, and that, there's something's going on, there's a struggle going on, and so, Unlike trying to be not like Job's, Job's buddies and condemning anybody, I just try to say, here's the path. Seek first the kingdom of God. Well, I don't know how somebody's going to take that. We can take it any way they want. But that's our admonition from Christ. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. All right. So how do you do that? Oh, oh you go to Bible study. Oh, you go to church. Oh, you hang around with a bunch of people who say, Lord, Lord, you know, you give your money to the poor, you just uh, donate to the church. What, what, what is it, you know? So I just think that one of the most important things that anyone could ever do is to break bread and honor the Lord's Supper. I just think it's too important and that we should be celebrating the Lord's Last Supper and there's just too many reasons to do it. There's, there's nothing but advantages to it. And it's, and it's actually a commandment, you know. He tells us, what's he say? He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. And I'm reading this from John 51. If any man eat this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I give is my flesh, 
which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. Look, there it is right there. So you know that Satan's got to hate that. You know, why does the churches not celebrate the Lord's Supper every single Sunday, every single Sabbath, every single time you get together? That's how crazy I think about it. Now, of course, I want everybody to do their own thing. So, so why? Why break bread? God says we are to obey. In doing so, we obey Christ and we proclaim who he is. He is the living bread that comes down from heaven. You know, unlike the manna that was given to the Jews in the, in the desert, they all died, he said, you know. And he says, what is he doing this for? This, this bread is my flesh. He actually came in the flesh. So the key is, he says, here's, here's another verse here. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh. Then the Jews began to argue and says, sharply amongst themselves, how can this man give us his flesh? He said to him, very truly I tell you, unless you eat this flesh of the Son of Man, why is that important? Then he says, and you eat the flesh of the Son of Man. Early he says, the bread is my flesh, and you have to eat this. Son of Man is the reference. This is so important. And I don't know of any fellowships or anybody who even brought this up. But the Son of Man, it goes back to the uh, Old Testament through the prophets when the Son of Man was referenced to the Messiah which was the anointing one that was promised in Genesis. And so, so why should we break bread? Because we come together, remember Christ, we talked about his body, he came in the flesh, we talked about his blood, he said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Well, I'll tell you what, you asked about why would, we, why would NBC, why would all these uh, uh, programs uh, get upset at CJ and cut them off, start and or cut, cut off anyone who's given a testimony from Christ because of that. Satan doesn't want whoever believes will be saved. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. He doesn't want that. He wants to be the ruler of the king. And that's what we're dealing with here the, the deception. And the churches, you know. I mean, you, you've been through, you've been, you've worked at Christian colleges, you've been, you, you've seen right. like all of it, and that's more than myself. So you see, you've seen this, you've seen those who are lord lording all over the place. Remember right. the time that Fellowship of Christian Answers, you asked me to, to speak in front of that group. And uh, most of those people didn't even, didn't even know who the Lord was. You know, right? I mean, so you've seen that. You've seen the working of those in high places, and how high they are. A lot of false like prophets. Job sure. Friends. A lot of false prophets. A lot of uh, deceivers, for sure. Definitely, man. Spitting wisdom as always, my friend. Spitting wisdom as always. Um, yeah. Hey, thank you. They, we we thank you guys for joining the uh, Faith and Facts podcast this week with with big. You cutting us off? You cutting us off? Ah, we, we did, you got to keep it under that forty minutes uh, realm, you know, and it, it makes things right. a little bit easier. But because uh, because you can't just put out too much information, you know, the people no. have to subscribe, they have to like, throw some comments at the bottom of the screen. Hey, some really good comments too. I like. Uh, There's been some incredible ones. You're going to have to show ones. me how to read more of them because I'm not too good at that. So, hey, but I like but, it. But make sure you do that and share this as many times as you possibly can. And we will be back next week with another episode of just great knowledge, great wisdom, and word from the Lord. And we'll talk a little more nutrition next week as well. So, have a great oh. one. Be blessed. My oh, friends, call the name of the Lord will be saved. Make sure you start calling. Amen. Amen.